call this meeting to order so we can get through our business uh, with reasonable promptness. And uh, I was talking to the clerk, and I, we thought that one of the first, the first thing we would take. Oh, great idea. Oh, that should be much better, thank you. Oh, yeah, wow. Um, <clears throat> one of the items on our agenda, which I don't think we have listed as first, uh, but is the, uh, is the voter checklist, and I'll pass that along to John. Yeah, we don't need any, uh, the law requires the BCA to review this every other year, and what we've done in the last few years is I just, you know, as I wrote in the email, I just get it out to folks and they get back to me, and a lot of you have gotten back to me, and that's great, so I just want, for the record, uh, I don't think it needs to be a motion or anything, but just for the record, have it on the agenda and have us have, you know, affirm informally that folks received that and either have reviewed it or are reviewing it, and then we're, we're fine. And John, I have two questions about that. <clears throat> Thank you. Great. Um, the, uh, the first is that there are, uh, it seems like it used to be that when we would review the checklist, we would get the, the whole checklist plus mm -hmm. a list of all the people who were added and all the people who were proposed to be deleted. Is that a change in That's actually, we do lot? that before the elections. Okay. So this is just <clears throat> look at it top to bottom and check it out. Mm -hmm. And in, in fact, we don't have to do that anymore either, but okay. it's still a good practice. And the other question that occurred to me is that I came across a cluster of registrants listed as blind ballot number something. Right. That's folks who are in the, um, I forget what it's called, but uh, uh, no, no, oh. they're citizens, but their identities are being shielded because of uh, domestic violence concerns. Ah. So mm. and there's a few of them. Yeah. Okay, cool. Anyone else have any questions or comments? I just wondered, so we gave you the folks that we thought had moved. Mm -hmm. Do you just take them off the list or are you double checking and like sending them a letter? I challenge them okay. so that they, they'll, get, uh, they'll get sent something. But it's like a multi-step process of challenging. Yes. So yes. It's not just long. one of us saying. <coughs> right. Although, I mean, I can just take them if, 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 if you all prefer. I challenge them. But the no, BCA does them. have the power to just say, you're removed. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. Okay. So the minutes can reflect that it's been reviewed by the Board of Civil Authority. All right. All right. They're going to be so happy at Secretary of State. Well, we want them to be happy. <laughs> All right. We have reports on three properties Atchison, Star, and Morse. Um, and we have Atchison up listed first. So who wants to tell us about that? Oh. Sal or Mary, I don't know. Carrie is not here. Carrie's She's not volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> is, this, is this Mr. Atchison? Yes. Okay. Mr. Atchison, do you want to come up to the table? Well, and, and were we going to ask him to go first because of the no? No, no he should get to respond to the report as a okay. as, in, in as far as the rules of procedure go. And Marty should be available for questions and such too. So, I think oh. he's I think he's with us, Marty. Yes, he is. Yes, here. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 
Um, so, the the main dispute really was not to the condition of the, of the uh, structure, but to the really the ratio of the structure to the to the lot size, um, and we 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 simply found that the. Uh, I mean, the lots, the land side, the land evaluation is independent of the, is independent of the structure. Um, so we don't, we didn't, we didn't see the, uh, uh, the, the, the validity of, of that ratio. So basically, bottom line, <clears throat> a lot's a lot, and the fact that it might be a tenth of an acre or a hundredth of an acre, more or less, as long as it's. The lot for that one property doesn't make a significant difference in the uh, value of the property. Yes, basically, and we uh, we checked the calculation that was done based on the lot schedule, the value of, of the full acre lot schedule, and then uh, the percentage that the, the land was given in the property card, and found it to be uh, in in line with with those values. Okay. Yeah, well, and I think, it, well, Mr. Atchison um, had an opportunity just because of the, we got our sequence out of order and he resubmitted some information, gave us a chart about, that was very complete and impressive. We had understood the argument that, that the, that was being made, which is that the land should be, value should be proportional to the properties coverage of the lot and we essentially did not agree with that we looked at the the land value separate from the house and um, felt that our assessment that the assessor's assessment was appropriate for for that we understood the argument had considered it and uh, agreed with the assessor's um, evaluation of, of, of that. Okay, thanks. Mr. Atkinson, you have something to yeah. add? Um, and thank you for having me back here. I appreciate the opportunity. And um, I guess I'm not, you know, in terms of the, the data I presented, it shows pretty clearly that our land value per square foot is very high relative to uh, all the comparables, whether they were the ones in my original sample or the ones, the, the six that Marty identified too. Um, and that's what the graphs show. You know, they show that, that, that our property is an, hour, is an outlier when you look at it on a per square foot basis. Um, so I'm, I guess I'm, you know, I, it's the assessed value that gives us our data to be able to do that. Of course, we don't know, and we're not going to be able to know how a sale breaks down into, you know, component parts. But in terms of the, the assessed values are supposed to reflect the market price. And when we look at those, and, you know, our property is an outlier. And not only that, but it's also the ones that are similar where there's basically what their ratio is about. It says, you know, how much land is there? How big is your plot relative to the size of the building? You know, it's a num numeric value, but really it comes down to that is how, what is the footprint of your building relative to the land? And ours is very small. And the ones in Marty's sample and in our larger sample were, you know, reflect that, show that same tendency. So when you have a small acreage, then, you know, that's, it seems to be a bias that's built into the assessor's model and their methodology. And I'm not, this is not, I'm not, this is not criticism at all of Marty. It is, you know, and it is about the, the modeling that goes on, and um, I have worked with a lot of models. Is my prof it's part of my profession, 
and I built computer models, so I know, you know, I conceive things, I work with data, and I'm sensitive to those kind of things. So that's what my, what our graphs are about, are trying to isolate that effect that I saw on the data. And on this most recent one that I said, which focuses on Mari's comparable, um, I first want to apologize for the size of the table data, <laughs> data that, you know, I wanted to get it in there, but it's not. Um, but I'm, I wanted to get the data in there, but it's not what I wanted people to focus on. I wanted the, the graphs of what you should look at. And the data there in the, in the small type in the table is just as backup to show you where all the numbers came from. Okay. Thanks. Any members of the board have any questions of either the report or uh, the taxpayer? Or any discussion? The chair would entertain a motion. I move that we accept the uh, report of October 12th on the property in 12 Spring Street. A second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for all the work you put into this. Thank you for the opportunity. All right. Next up, we have, uh, have the STAR uh, report, four and a half uh, Sibley Avenue. I should announce who can vote on this too because it's okay. the same as um, Actually, it's a little different. So we're doing star, you said? Yes. So the following people will be able to vote on this one. And if I don't read your name, I think, I think it's probably everybody if it's here. But if I don't read your name, you cannot vote on this one because you weren't here that meeting. Jack, Tim, Mark, Sal, Kim, Mary, Sarah, Rosie, Bob. Oh, you're all here. No, right. Right. So I don't think anybody that I, I don't think anybody's not here. I think it's the same crowd. Looks like you all are hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> so Bob or Sal, who wants to talk about this one? This is what star. Right. Go for it, Bob. Yeah. Uh, we we visited the property, and it's a pretty unique property. It's four and a half simply. Uh, the property is. Basically, landlocked. Uh, the property has it's in terrible condition. Uh, it hasn't been lived in since 2012. Uh, there's uh, blockage to get into the property because of uh, a fence that was put up. There's a right of way that's shared by three properties actually, it's shared by four, six, and four and a half. Uh, and the, the property is, in, in our opinion, it would be almost impossible to get it up to any livable condition at this point. It doesn't have any water, and basically the building is falling down, the side of the hill is falling down, and we carefully went inside the property, which was actually, I thought, pretty dangerous to go in there. It was, it, it was difficult to walk through the property and look at everything, but we managed to somehow make it up the stairs into the second floor, and uh, we, we think the property is getting this right pretty much of a fire hazard it could be at this point. There's, there's no access. Uh, the, the original assessment had a 95.5% depreciation on the building itself. Uh, we, we looked at that and thought the building, even 95, wasn't high enough for the condition of this building. It's going to take uh, something to. It's going to, it's, it, if it's possible to have a negative value, in my opinion, I don't know if it's a total opinion, it could have a negative value. Uh, we also looked at the lot itself, and on the lot, uh, it, the lot had adjustments for both access 
and uh, location. What was the other part of it? Uh, it was location and easement. There were two yeah. things: the right, the right of way, and uh, the location of it because of easements. And the originally, it looked like they took off on the land chart. They used a higher value on the land. They used, uh, and we we determined that the, the on the uh, land charts it should have been an EF code, which is a fair condition instead of an average condition. So it, it brought the base value down to begin with the seventy one thousand five hundred, and then we made adjustments for the location and the easement. We took off another thirty percent. And we came up with a land value of fifty thousand and fifty dollars, and on the house value, we brought the house value down to twenty-one hundred dollars. So we uh, had the assessment reduced to uh, fifty-two thousand one hundred dollars. By a couple of questions, and I don't know if you have the answers to all of them, but one of them is. Uh, I was trying to figure out from from the map and everything. Does the does the fence go onto the driveway at all, or is the driveway at least theoretically open all the way to this property? It's so hard to determine because um, it's not paved, right? It's not what? Not paved. The driveway. Yeah. The, the, it, it is. The driveway isn't paved, but it is paved. The the easement part of the driveway. Is okay. Paved. Yeah, I, it's the um, property boundary, I believe, is shown in Marty's uh, diagram as being like 64 feet, roughly, on the back. And uh, Mr. Starr described the wall as being 60 feet. So my guess is that we didn't measure it, but it stops. Right at the edge. It stops. Mm -hmm. at, not so much at the edge of the, it stops four feet in from the edge of the property, which is half of the easement. The easement is half on number four and half on number six, four feet on each side. Mm -hmm. And is it, is it possible to get the car out of there? It's, in my opinion, it'd be difficult to get the car out of there, but you could lift it out somehow. You could lift it straight up. You could uh, excavate a good portion of the top of the hill there, which may not actually be the appellant's property. I don't know where it, where that line starts and stops. It's It'd be very hard to get it out of there. So he must have left the car parked there when the fence was being built. Probably before. According to his document, he um, when he found out that he had to move the car off the neighbor's property, he dug out the hillside and moved it over. He didn't. He claims he didn't know that the owner had a, a permit to build the fence. Hmm. Okay. So, the fence was built without his having an opportunity to move the car. Kim. I have a couple of questions. Why couldn't you just uh, tow the car out into the right of way and then tow it to the junkyard? Um. Well, you, I, you, you can't. Before the fence went up. There's no way to, you'd have to tow it at right angles. It, it, there's no way to get a, a tow truck. You couldn't go it straight back down to the right of way. It's parked at right angles to the right of way. So you'd have to pull it out this way. And there's no way to do that without creating some sort of pivot point that pulls it straight out. My other question is specialized uh, truck to, to get that out. Or, or you'd have to dismantle the corner of the yeah. fence. It would fit. And Do you think it buried in that? It's just one element. Or dismantle the car. I suppose you could take the car apart. Yeah. I have or one other question. Down, yeah, I can. Fence. Could do that. It sounds to me like the house is valueless. Pardon? The house is valueless. It's actually the cost of removing that the land can't be used unless you tear the house down and get it out of there. So I think your land value is too high. It should be 
reduced by the cost of removing the house and getting all the trash out of there. Well, we reduced the land value twice, one for uh, the category that was in, and then again for not being able to get in there. I mean, it, but it, it has no, something to get in there. The house is a liability on it. You yeah, know, you that's have to why get the house is valued at $2,000. But the land has value. The land has value, it seems to me, and there is a right of way to it. And if you got rid of the house, you might actually be able to build a, you know. Well, actually, theoretically, yes. You know, you have a lot back there. The, the problem is the easement overlaps the driveway. So I, I just came by the lot on the way here, and there's a car parked on, in the driveway. I don't know which house it belongs to. But that's likely to be the case because the driveway is shared by two structures plus an easement. Generally, an easement is off to one side of a, of a driveway so that it provides access and uh, at all times. This, this doesn't provide access at all times. It's, it's access subject to the whims of, of the, the neighboring houses. No, that, that clearly would violate the right of way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It would. Yeah, I, I've owned two houses that have been on this kind of shared driveway situation, and it was a pain, but uh, you uh, it nobody parked it in the driveway to block out the other people who use the driveway or in. But any of Mary? Well, I, I, I understand the potential development costs that would be associated with trying to do something there. But there may, but I have a hard time saying that the land should be devalued because of that, because there may be other reasons that land is valuable say to the adjoining property owners. You could sell the property to them um, and they may have a use. So I have a hard time saying it, the land has zero value or a substantially reduced amount of value because it strikes me that adjacent property owners, and people would like to have a place to park their car, could find value in, in that. Yeah, really expensive to, you know, remediate the lot essentially, but that, that feels like it's getting way beyond what we know um, and hard to evaluate what it ought to be. So I can be comfortable with what the committee is reporting. Well, let me just add that the property is from the, from the point of the fence, there's probably, well, at the, at the, at the structure there's maybe seven feet to the foundation, and then the structure is there, and there's a, there's a basement, and behind the house there's a retaining wall that the city built that's holding a very steep hill. But on either side of the structure, the hill, the hill goes up immediately from the fence, yeah. so it's, it's extremely steep. sloped yeah. from the, from the, from the uh, southern boundary. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Do you have a motion to approve it? I move that we accept the report of the committee. And any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Great. And finally, we have uh, Morse. And this is the same crowd, except Bob, you cannot vote on this one. But other than that, it looks like it's all. Oh, and Sarah, you cannot vote on this one either. And the committee here was uh, me, Donna, and Lauren. And Lauren's not here, so Donna, you want to? Another one of those houses that really. Um, diminishes the property value. <laughs> but we, we did not take that into consideration uh, totally. We didn't wipe out the value. The house is really uninhabitable. 
And we also went into it with trepidation. Um, and so the, the whole point um, is really that we feel like you can't even get in the front door. There's a tree there as well. And then once you get in, everything is very much in the stage of a lot of mold and having been redone, they took a kitchen out and everything's like unsettled. There's what was the kitchen is now a bedroom and what is a kitchen has all these temporary fixtures and the basement is a total mess. It's hard to get up the steps because there's lacking the first two uh, to, to the second floor and then it's a very narrow. Everything about it is just um, the house, we really reduced the value of the house is what we did. Um, and this, oh, yes? Sorry, I thought you were done. I'm well, just, and the structure is being held up by poles out back, that go, the beam that goes across. I wish I knew what the terms were. The main beam of holding the roof up is gone. And so we, we looked at that, and we felt that it wasn't reduced enough. And we compared it to the other properties um, that was on the chart. And it's just worlds away from where they are. And just the location itself. It's very hard and the lot value. So that's why we got to the 5750. The land itself is 47,000. And we put in like 10,000 for the house. So you all have another sheet because the house just sold. It did. <laughs> so I thought you all might want to have copies. I just made copies of the property tax transfer. The property sold. The, yes, so it sold. <laughs> it sold for 50, yeah, right. It sold for 50,000. Wow, we didn't do bad. So it's pretty, pretty dang close. <laughs> Tim? We move to approve the committee's recommendation. Sorry. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Yeah, wow. we really wanted to get rid of it. It is so sad to see property just let rot. It's just sad. And I don't think we have anything else we need to do tonight. So at 7.03, we oh, will, can recess. That means more meetings so. some other time. Yeah.